thanks everyone for coming. My name is Jeff. This is Kula, and we're doing a presentation on scams. We're focusing a lot on online scams, but there's going to be in-person aspects to some of these as well. Um, wanted to say that this is a new grant funded by the Financial Services Regulatory Authority. Um, they are a branch of the Ontario government that actually fines businesses uh, when they break the law and the fines that they collect is what funds this project. So it's a really interesting way to use the fines that are collected. They're reinvesting it in community agencies like the Brain Injury Association of Waterloo Wellington. And we're very happy that they uh, were able to fund this uh, uh, fund this initiative. Um, so we're going to start with the scams in general. Canadians lose about a hundred million dollar to hundred million dollars a year to frauds and scams. And the one thing we know for sure about that number is that is low. It's much more than that because most people don't report it when it happens. Uh, and we're going to go through things today. Some of them have to do with uh, things that are illegal uh, and that uh, you can be reported to police. But some of these things aren't illegal, uh, but they're still unethical, immoral, and they should be illegal. But in a lot of cases, there's uh, not necessarily much you can do except protect yourself against it. So we're going to go through each of those things. I'm by no means, and Kula is by no means a lawyer or uh, a police officer. So um further advice can be sought out on these matters as well. Um, so basically, what does a scam look like? Well, they generally have five main characteristics. One, they're uninvited. They're things that you didn't request or ask for. They arrive to you somehow. There tends to be an aspect of urgency to them. They're asking you to hurry up and make a decision quickly. They're high reward and low risk. So they're telling you, you know, you, you missed your chance. This will be a big mistake. They're asking you to pay first before you get something. Um, and they're telling you that there's a routine. This is routine. This isn't a big deal. Don't worry. Um, so this is an example of one that came from Amazon. You know, congratulations. You've won a thousand dollar Amazon gift card. It's reserved to you, Facebook user. Uh, step one, click to continue the button to claim your prize. Step two, enter the correct information to claim your prize. You only have four minutes and 14 seconds to claim your prize. So if you look at, it, there's two things that are in here that should call your attention. It's unpersonalized. It's not addressed to you. Uh, and the wording sounds urgent, but when you think about it, why would it be urgent? Why would you have to do this fast? Why would you need to claim this prize in four minutes? Uh, so what they do is they put you under a time crunch you don't have a lot of time to investigate and they're not actually taking you to Amazon. They're taking you to a copied site that is going to get your information and somehow access your accounts based on what you put in to uh, try to obtain this gift card. And then you won't, in a lot of cases, these things are not local, they're overseas. So there's very little you can do to get your money back. So what do they look like? Oftentimes they look really convincing. Uh, it's a, as we said to start, it's a hundred million dollar a year business. So in a hundred million dollar a year business, you, people get good at it. Uh, so they're going to, they're going to look very professional often. They may have websites that are really convincing and you can think they're familiar to you. You can think, well, I dealt with someone like this before I, I dealt with, a, a, a this sounds, this sounds like something I've done before. So, um, as we go into specifics, you'll see how those kind of how those how those track. So how do you protect yourself? Well, just to start, getting information and looking into it yourself is a good idea. Don't rush decisions. Do your homework. Don't be influenced by someone telling you to hurry. Uh, and whenever whenever possible, don't share your information online, especially things like your SIN number, your bank account number, and most importantly, a PIN number or password. Those should never be shared over the phone and no professional service is going to ask you for your PIN or password. That's supposed to be private to you. Um, a bank will send you to a third party or text you or something like that to confirm your password. It's not going to ask you to say it. Um, and if, a, if this is a genuine service you're working with, they're not going to mind. 
they're going to be okay. They're not going to get annoyed or, or impatient with you when you're trying to confirm it. Um, so there's a list of 10 scams here. There are more, and then there are ones that are variations of one another. So there's the CRA scam, an advanced fee scam, a romance scam, an account info update, door-to-door -door scam, emergency scams, misleading prize prize offers, non-existent charity scams, online purchase scams, and phishing. How many, like, I actually can't see everyone, but I imagine all of us have gotten the CRA call. So getting a phone call or an email yeah. from the CRA saying, yeah. aggressively telling you that you have to pay taxes that you owe. And they'll claim to be from the Canada Revenue Agency. And here is the script. So I'm going to read it out loud. I'm not going to read it in what's often, it's often like a robotic voice, but the reason behind this call is to notify you that we have registered a criminal case against you concerning a tax evasion and tax fraud in the federal courthouse. So if you want any further information about this case, please make sure that you give us a call back as quick as possible to our direct hotline number to the Canada Revenue Agency headquarters. That is 613-927-9919. We, I will please repeat the number. It is 613-927-9919. If we don't receive a call from your side, please be prepared to face legal consequences as the tax issue is extremely serious and time sensitive. First things first, the CRA would never leave a message like this and never place a call like this. Uh, they are professional people. They will ask to speak to you. They will first make sure they can confirm your identity. And in most cases, they would have no problem if you say, can I just hang up and look at this number and make sure that this is from the actual Canada Revenue Agency? And you can look up the number, call back, call back uh, after you've you've checked. Um, but they're they're very well aware of these things occurring and they're going to be very, very patient with you and those. Oh, sorry, I moved ahead because my computer is very sensitive. So several of you have had this happen. Uh, is that close to the script that you heard as a group? Yeah. Yeah. So it's getting old now, like they've been doing it for a while, um, but we always have to be on our toes for new variations of it. Because, again, these people can be quite creative about it. And it's scary, right? Like, it's scary to think you're going to be in, in tax trouble. There's a lot of urban... Yeah, money. nowadays it's uh, overwhelming how many scam phone calls you get a day. That, honestly, I don't even answer my phone anymore. Like, that's how bad it's gotten. Yeah. 90% yeah. of them are asking for air duct cleaning or it's some kind of scam. <laughs> so. Yeah. So an advanced fee scam is one where you're supposed to pay money in anticipation of receiving something of greater value, such as a loan, a contract, an investment, or a gift, but then you get little or nothing back. So this is a little bit like the, uh, the what we were hearing before we started about paying for a service, and then you get a little bit for it, but then when you pay for the year, the service doesn't exist. Um uh, this often involves the sale of a product or investments or lottery winnings or found money uh, or other opportunities, in quotes. Uh, you will be offered a financial arrangement or a finder's fee if you pay in advance. You may even sign contracts and agree to pay a fee once you're introduced to the, the source of the financing. Victims generally then learn that they were never eligible uh, after they paid the, final, the finder's fee. Uh, and the agreements uh, may actually be legal um, if you entered into it. So um, there, there's being aware of it so you're not in this situation is quite important. So the next one is one that hits pretty close to home. Uh, like most people know someone that's been in a romance scam. Um, um, my brother-in-law's sister is in the midst of one right now. And uh, um, on most days, uh, and, and one of the reasons this doesn't get reported is it's quite embarrassing to people. So in this situation, I actually, uh, this is someone that worked for my father. And I found out uh, that after his, his wife passed away, he lost his house uh, because of a romance scam. So I'm going to play the video. It probably it's YouTube. So it may show an ad before. So just warning you guys of that. Round oh, the there we go. Knock out two tough competitors. And now only three chefs remain. I am 
Canadians lost more than $22 million to romance fraud in 2018, and it's a crime that officials say is vastly underreported. The perpetrators typically try to meet someone using dating websites and then over time start asking for money. Pat Foran has one victim story on Consumer Alert. Pat. Well, Nathan and Michelle in Oshawa, man, says after his wife died, he tried online dating. He met a woman and says over a period of four years, he gave her $300,000, and now he's afraid he will lose his home. Walter Zutel uses a wheelchair due to a spinal cord injury. He was married for 13 years and says he was heartbroken when his wife Laura died in 2010. When they tell you that you've met your soulmate, uh, this is definitely, she was definitely my soulmate. Zutel says after a few years, he decided to try online dating to meet someone. I knew I was never going to find another person like my wife, but I missed that companionship, so person to talk to, you know, laugh with when you're having good times and talk to when you're having sad times. He met a woman who said she was a former personal support worker, and after six months of chatting online, they agreed to meet. When you're in a wheelchair and you find somebody you think that's not in a wheelchair, that that finds you attractive, you think you basically hit the gold mine. Before long, he says she started asking for money. Gradually, she started asking for money for this. And for that, it was little things, and gradually the amounts got more and more. Zutel says over a period of four years, he bought her a car, paid for several operations, and kept sending her money until he was almost completely broke. Zutel says he was financially independent and never had any money problems until he met the woman through the online dating website, and now he's terrified he could lose this home. Over total, I'm in debt of over $300,000 now. Like The house is remortgaged. My credit cards are maxed out. I've got three lines of credit. Now he's not sure where the woman is. She no longer returns his calls or emails. I told her, I said, I need this money back. You know, it's like, it's like I can't just keep giving you this money. I... Zutel says he may only be a month away from losing his house. I'm scared. I'm upset. I'm sad. I can't. I mean, it's... I, I cried myself to sleep almost every night. Um, I just, like I said, I just wanted some companionship. I'm just praying for a miracle. Only about 5% of romance scam cases get reported, but the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre recommends you file a police report if you or a family member have been the victim of romance fraud. On your side, I pat for it. If you have a consumer story idea, email us at So, um, yeah, that is a, a man that I knew he has passed away since the story. Um, but uh, you watch it and you're like, well, how in the world can something like this happen? So I actually met with a police officer who kind of told me how these things sort of occur. So you can be like working around the house one day and your phone rings and someone says, is this Jeff? And I say, Yeah. And then they say, is this Jeff from York University? And I say, no, no, I went to Trent. And they're like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I went to Trent. So the next day, a Facebook profile hits up my uh, my address and says, hey, are you Jeff from Trent? I, I remember you. And then we'll start talking. I think I know this person. Uh, and then as the, you know, as you get closer, as time moves on, then all of a sudden there's requests for financial uh financial support oftentimes because the person's in a dangerous situation or because they're they're being threatened so uh, it could be money you're sending for a plane ticket so the person can come visit you um but oftentimes the entire profile is fake including the photo of the person uh in a world with video chats and things like that there are ways to to make sure this person is is real um and there's also ways to search for images online re reverse in image searches uh i was working with someone two weeks ago and he had this happen by a, a text message where a conversation about a wrong text message starts and this is another scam that we'll talk about a little bit later um but when i searched her photo her photo was on uh i think it's ali baba.com it's a it's an online shopping site she was a model that the person had copied the the photo image to so, so signs that you know that you're in one of, probably in one of these scams is there they are often in another city or country so they're not local to you um, that gives them some distance and helps them to be 
um, stay anonymous. Uh, they will note that they can't afford to travel. They need some help from you. Um, they're running away, as we mentioned before, from a dangerous or abusive situation. Um, they're low on cash, but they want to come see you and they want to be able, but they need some help from you. Um, in often cases, you are asked to support that interaction um, financially, and it, it allows them to be able to uh, pull on the emotional heartstrings in that sense. So the next one we're going to discuss is called pig butchering. I didn't name this. This is a name that came from, uh, uh, it actually uh, is, there's a, it's a Chinese term translated, it's pig butchering, but it's a, a scam that involves uh, fattening up the person uh, in order to get large sums of money from them. Uh, uh, they, it's it's mainly based on trust, much like the romance scam, and it's a variation of the romance scam. Uh, and it often leads to either fake investment platforms or fraudulent uh, Bitcoin accessing and and things like that. Uh, cryptocurrency is a really common feature now. So the trust uh, it often involves uh, much like a romance scam, a, a chance encounter. So most commonly. I don't know if this has happened to many of you, but getting a text message from someone saying, I'm running late, I'll be there at 15 minutes, but I forgot to grab the casserole. And then you're like, sorry, wrong number. And they're like, oh, how, LOL, I'm I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm silly, I, I, I put in the wrong number. But you're starting an exchange back and forth. Um, and then as you get closer to this person, going back and forth, thinking you had this random chance encounter, uh, you start getting told about different opportunities that are out there, fake investment opportunity. And most often right now it involves cryptocurrency. The same variation can take place on a dating site, on social media, or on any other messaging app. The tactics used, uh, building trust, establish a relationship, whether being romantic or professional. There's an investment opportunity that is offering very high returns. There's an initial success. The victims may see small, uh, profits further building their trust and then there's pressure to do more and but eventually there's going to be uh there's going to be a huge financial loss related to it the signs of it is it's unsolicited it's a new acquaintance it's not someone you know it's high pressure to invest quickly and then when you actually want to access the money you think you're making you are going to have difficulty getting it um so the uh, how to avoid this particular one uh, doing research on whatever investments that are being proposed, consult professionals, speak to a licensed financial advisor before making large investments, never send any money, avoid transferring funds to anyone you've met online, stop contact. If you're feeling it's a scam, cease all communication, report the contact to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. The scary thing about both of these things is if you're participating willingly, oftentimes especially in a romance scam, that really sad story that we saw there wasn't actually illegal um, because although this man was absolutely manipulated, he, he didn't, he did it of his own free will and that, that therefore charging the person with theft isn't possible because he gave it to her. Um, but reporting it to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center and local authorities can help other people not being victimized. And it helps the people who do research on this get real information and real numbers. And then monitoring accounts. Inform your, your, in, inform your bank as soon as possible if you have suspicious transactions or transactions that you're, you don't trust. So, yeah. I'll just take that a little bit further. Uh, if you're involved with these people and they ask you to download WhatsApp, that's a red flag. Oh, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they always find new ways of trying to entice you to communicate, right? So same yeah. thing happens when we talk about like account updating, right? So you'd often get a message, email or text message saying, you know, this uh, it very, looks very familiar to an account that you already have. Our example here is Amazon. Um, but as we said, you can see a lot of generic information like dear Amazon customer. Uh, if it's not directed to you, this is probably a, definitely a red flag regarding this um, account update information. Um, they often will ask for 
let you know that a payment has failed. Uh, so they're having trouble making that, um, withdrawing that automatic payment that you normally have, and they need to update your information, um, or they might have det detected some uh, suspicious uh, information going on or activity on your account and wanting to make sure of verification that it is you. Uh, they ask for you to update it or verify your billing information, your login information, and they'll ask you to put that in to that email that they send you, which is definitely oftentimes you can find out that very quickly that this is a phony link that they're sending you to and um, and they're, take, they're going to try and take some money that they don't have access to. Yeah, it's a big one that's going on right now, it's, uh, at least once a week. Yes, I, I'm, I'm getting get a phone, all get this a phone call from Amazon. Emails. Yeah. So as we said, what you need to look for, look for the generic um, customer information, dear customer, not dear so-and-so directed directly to you. Um, the email often seek to get your login information or your password, um, your SIN number, or update your billing information, um, like your account information, which you would normally not have put in, but because you don't want to lose access to the site, you often be um, coerced into putting this information in. Uh, look for typos. Oftentimes, the mm -hmm. their this email is coming from overseas, and they're not necessarily um, speaking the same language, and can uh, not be paying attention to what they're putting into the email. So you'll have grammar and spelling issues. And there's always usually an urgency to those emails. Don't lose your access to your account. Hurry, get this information in. When, you know, if you just took a couple of minutes and really looked into it yourself, you'll probably find out that this isn't true. Uh, say, uh, phishing um, scams are sort of the same way. A lot of these scams will intersect with each other. They'll connect in some way. Uh, phishing will phishing scam will try and gather information from you that you wouldn't normally have given out online. Um, they're looking for you to respond and give them access to your account. Uh, or you click on a link um, by accident and it, they talk about that now you see this big sign in your computer that there is a malware on your computer, uh, a virus that they'll need to help you to uh, remove in some way. These are all ways in trying to gather information they don't have access to in what seemingly is like a legitimate way. So here's an example that I think some of us have gotten in email form or text message form. Um, looks legit, has the Canada Revenue Agency on it, but you can see some of the generic information <clears throat> that we'll point out. Um, it's It seems okay, and there's an access to a link. But as you can see from that, what we're trying to highlight here is the strange thing is why is it not addressed to anyone in particular? If this was truly for you, it would have your name on it. Um, the dollar sign is um, after the, the number, which is not how you know uh, people in the Western countries will actually depict this um, this form of currency depiction. And uh, why aren't they asking you to go to my CRA account? We know that now, especially past COVID, that a lot of our interactions online with uh, most agencies have been push towards going online, but they'll ask you to create an account, which gives you authentication notifications, and you'll have to go through two, three step verifications to make sure that it is you. So now when we look at that email, like that we showed before, we could highlight, there's no uh, direct, um, it's not directed to you personally, it says dear taxpayer, uh, it's asking you to, to notify a tax refund now, which is an urgency component to it. Um, the number sign is after the $651.44. Um, that's not how we go. And they're asking for your SIN information and to click a link in this email instead of asking to go to your, um, your verified account. This is a malware uh, warning. So the, the scam associated with this is you download the software and then the software actually gets access to your information. It can be ransomware, which all your data is held for uh, ransom, or it can actually allow access to your computer from a third party. Um, and if they can screen mirror it, they can actually see when you type in your banking information, if you do an online banking, 
So be very, very wary of what you download. In fact, if you're offered anything to download from a not reputable site, like take a step away and, and look for it yourself. If it pops up on your screen, you probably don't want to download it. There are exceptions. You can be on a site like Adobe or uh, iTunes where you're having to update things. But for the most part, if anything looks like this, exit out of it, delete it. If your computer starts acting weird, shut your computer down. Um, yeah. Can I mention uh, some great protection on for that? Sure. That I, that I use AdGuard. Have, have you ever heard of AdGuard? Yeah, cool. Probably knows more than me. Yeah, about, so. uh, yeah. yeah. Computers come with a, a a virus scanning component to it. Um, Windows comes with it built into their their software. You can find external ones as well, which you'll pay for, and then uh, um load onto your computer, and it will often detect if you're traveling to a suspicious site and give you a warning. Um, some of it yeah. will shut down some of those tracking components for you in the background. But yeah, so that's, that's pretty much a good, a good, a good um, piece of software to have. So, yeah. one of the, the the tricky things is a lot of people who are falling victim to a scam don't know it's actually happening to them, or their caregivers or support people aren't able to recognize. So, here are some of the things to look for that might be a sign that you've been a victim of a scam unexpected charges on an account you know uh so i actually was once trying to get out of a parking garage with a, a client in toronto and my credit card didn't work and i called the credit card company and this was such an interesting uh scam that was going on for me because of the purchases on my account one of them was for i think it was multiple payments for this subscription for like beard conditioner which was really weird and the other one was christianmingle.com so this is a christian dating site so this person was stealing from me to go on a christian dating site it was just such an interesting way to be uh, defrauded but here's the good side when i notified the bank i got all my money back because i actually uh however this was done to me it did it was one of the features that the bank insures against when it's your credit card so I did get my money back, but it was a very odd and stressful couple of days. And I lost my credit card for a week and a half, which was no fun. Um, if you start receiving credit cards you didn't apply for. So if all of a sudden a Capital One card shows up or a Canadian Tire Visa or something like that, it's a sign that if you don't remember applying to it, there's probably uh, potentially a problem. And maybe it's a good idea to have your credit checked or to look into your account or speak with your bank. Um, if you've been denied credit, like let's say you're applying for a loan or applying for a credit card and you think your credit's good, but all of a sudden you're, you've are you been de denied it, it's a good sign that maybe something's wrong with your account. If you ever receive something from a debt collector, but you don't remember having any relationship with that company, uh, if you do a credit check, which you can do once a year for free and not have an impact your credit, and it shows accounts that you didn't know about, uh, if any of your bills stop arriving, so if you're used to getting a credit card bill or used to get, and they all of a sudden don't arrive at your house anymore, it's a chance. There's a chance that that it's been redirected to another source. Uh, and if you start getting more and more unsolicited proposals, you start to get more and more offers and more and more things. All of those things are a little bit of red flags that there might be something wrong with your accounts somewhere. So we're going to talk a little bit about overall lessons here. And then maybe open up for questions and stuff like that. I probably, I, I, we can go off recording for the questions. So if there is questions, but we want to do them off recording, we can do that as well. So the first thing, say no thanks. Say no thank you or just hang up. Uh, there's always a sign too, if you pick up your phone and there's like a pause for a few seconds, that's a sign that you're getting robo called. Like there's multiple, like this. Uh, uh, and, and can I step in for a second? Yeah. When I, when I get scam phone calls, I didn't request this to happen, but mm -hmm. the phone before the person answers, it goes badoop. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it gives me a, it gives me a warning. Oh, that's great. Some phones it have different features it. I'm finding, and depending on the phone company you're with as well. 
Um, I know mm -hmm. that uh, from a lot of investigation or, or information sharing, my phone now will tell me I'm with Bell and it'll tell me that this feels like a suspicious um, scan, a suspicious call and it'll actually show mm -hmm. up as red mm -hmm. more often than not. Um, and then I can have the option without even answering the call whether or not I want to take it. And then it will help report. So as we said, sharing this information with the authorities can help build that um, background of database information about where these scam phone calls are coming in from. And then the co phone companies can take that information and start helping to, to sift through some of those, filter out some of those calls for you. And they can, but they can fake it from a local number. They can even make it look like it is from the Canadian Revenue Service. Like you can have your phone and the, it can look like, it can look like the tax services are calling you. Um, so even when it says CRA on the call, you don't have to necessarily believe it. Uh, and it's wise to, to say, okay, I have to confirm this number with you before I'm giving you any information. Yeah, it's funny that a lot of them use uh, phone numbers that are, are no longer in service. Yeah, or, or a local. You try and call them back and they tell you it's, they're no longer in service. Yeah, like all most of the calls I get are local too. They're nine oh five or four one six number or in your area six one three. Like it uh oftentimes like they are they seem local even though they're coming from another country. Um asking for somebody's advice is always good. Um getting feedback, getting uh, whether that's someone in your your home or a support worker or an agency, um, always wise to to utilize that uh whenever it's available. Uh uh, most likely if you didn't ask for it, you don't want it. If things start, I always think about that when someone comes to the door and they're like, do you want us to, uh, you know, pave your driveway? And it was like, if I wanted someone to pave my driveway, I probably would have called someone to pave my driveway. You know, you coming to the door doesn't mean I want to do that. So yeah, recently I had somebody show me on their tablet, uh, their signature on a, on a document. Mm-hmm. Their like, signature? Any, anybody can do that <laughs> yeah. yeah like, just like okay what does that even mean so yeah um uh look into things yourself uh like take the time not the the urgency is almost always manufactured uh there in, in these cases you have all the time you want to make a decision and uh and taking that time to look into it yourself is never a problem so we're now at the questions stage now um emily did you uh want to go off recording here yeah we can do that okay so i will stop the recording <laughs>